Have you ever heard of Nefertiti, the powerful queen who lived in ancient Egypt during the reign of her husband, Pharaoh Akhenaten? One of the most fascinating and mysterious figures in history, her story is full of twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Did Nefertiti play a significant role in shaping Akhenaten's religious reforms to maintain his grip on the throne and prevent an uprising? Was she part of a cult that revered the sun god Ra? And did she use this belief to transition it towards the worship of the deity Aten? Or was it true, as some Egyptologists believe, that Nefertiti may have ruled as pharaoh in her own right after Akhenaten's death? Join us as we delve into the mystery and intrigue of Nefertiti's life and uncover the truth about this enigmatic queen. Her Role in the Religious Revolution In ancient Egypt, the 18th dynasty witnessed the rise of a remarkable pharaoh, Amenhotep IV, who later became known as Akhenaten. Alongside his wife, Nefertiti, Akhenaten launched a bold and unprecedented religious and cultural initiative that transformed the polytheistic faith of Egypt into a new monotheistic one, centered on the worship of the deity Aten. To establish this new religion, Akhenaten and Nefertiti built a new capital city devoted solely to the veneration of Aten. However, their efforts were met with opposition from two powerful groups, the traditional priesthood, which wielded significant political and economic influence through their control of the temples, their associated lands and resources, and the military establishment, who are unhappy with Akhenaten's changes to the military hierarchy. The tension between Akhenaten and these groups threatened his hold on power, prompting some historians to suggest that Nefertiti may have played a significant role in shaping Akhenaten's religious reforms in order to maintain his grip on the throne and prevent an uprising. According to some Egyptologists, it is possible that Nefertiti belonged to a cult or religious group that revered the sun god Ra. They believe that Akhenaten may have considered the Aten to be a manifestation of Ra rather than a completely separate deity. If Nefertiti did worship Ra, she could have used this belief to build on the existing cult of Ra and transition it towards the worship of the Aten. This theory is significant because few historians have linked Nefertiti's involvement in the cult to the missing left eye in her bust. It is possible that the omission of the eye symbolizes her devotion to the worship of the Aten and her rejection of traditional Egyptian religion. Barry Kemp, Professor Emeritus of Egyptology stated that although the bust of Nefertiti is widely recognized, there is still much unknown about this influential woman and other members of the royal family. She might have been a pharaoh. Certain Egyptian arts depict Nefertiti in ways normally only pharaohs are shown. For instance, she can be seen smiting enemies, a portrayal reserved mostly for pharaohs only. One of the smiting scenes shows Nefertiti on a ship raising her right hand to end a female prisoner. It is possible that this art was symbolic, but that can't be said for certain. Additionally, she wore a type of helmet-like crown that was typically reserved for pharaohs or the goddesses Teftut or Hathor. It is not clear why Nefertiti was depicted this way. But one idea is that after Akhenaten's death, Nefertiti's power rose significantly, so much so that she was able to rule as pharaoh in her own right. The Egyptian records mention a figure named Nefer-Neferwaten, who ruled Egypt for a brief time. It has been speculated by many scholars that this may have been the throne named for Queen Nefertiti. It wasn't uncommon for the individual to take up a new name after becoming a pharaoh. Another theory suggests that after her husband's death, the only person rightful of succeeding him would be the famed boy king Tutankhamun. But at the time, Tut was only a child. As such, some Egyptologists claim that Nefertiti must have played a prominent role, most likely that of a regent pharaoh during King Tut's early years. Nefer Say Nefer Dr. Nicholas Reeves, an Egyptologist, made a discovery in 2015 that uncovered hidden chambers within the tomb of Tutankhamun, potentially containing the mummy of Nefertiti. This revelation sparked a search to locate the burial site of one of history's most important women. In the fifth year of Akhenaten's reign, he created a new city called the Horizon of the Aten. 
halfway between Thebes and Memphis, where he and his wife Nefertiti and his royal entourage lived for about 13 years. Inscriptions from Akhenaten's regnal year 16 referred to Nefertiti as his great royal wife. However, after his 17th year of reign, it becomes difficult to track events due to fragmentary evidence. Despite the lack of documentation about her life, it is not surprising that Nefertiti was buried in the Valley of the Kings. She likely ruled as pharaoh or a regent after Akhenaten's death and may have guided Egypt to return to its traditional ways in an attempt to please the people. As a result, it is probable that she would have wanted a tomb in the traditional royal cemetery at Thebes, the Valley of the Kings, possibly alongside a young Tutankhamun as the co-pharaoh. Egyptologist Aidan Dodson believes that KV-62, which is Tutankhamun's tomb, could have initially been Nefenefawatan's resting place, and she was moved when the sepulchre was used for Tutankhamun's funeral. Dr. Marian Eaton Krauss argues that KV-62 was not intended for Tutankhamun's burial, but rather for a lesser member of the royal family, such as Nefertiti. This explanation clarifies the feminine aura of Tutankhamun's artifacts, paintings, and tomb. The faces on Tut's canopic jars, which were used to store organs removed from the mummy in the tomb, have very feminine features. Eaton Krauss believes that many of the items in Tut's tomb were originally the property of a queen who was beneficial for her husband, which was Nefertiti's typical title, referring to Akhenaten. Reeves points to the clues in the tomb's hieroglyphics, indicating that under the cartouches of Air are cartouches of Tutankhamun himself. This suggests that the scene originally depicted Tutankhamun burying his predecessor, Nefertiti. This revelation corresponds with other theories, too, that suggest Tutankhamun's tomb was too small for a pharaoh. The burial chamber was built to the right of the entrance, which would suggest a queen, and this was also mentioned in Egyptologist Chris Knowlton when he told the Smithsonian Magazine that, One of the first things you notice when you enter the tomb, you come down the descending passageway and you need to take a turn right. This is quite unusual for 18th dynasty tombs because in most cases what you would expect of a pharaoh's tomb is a left-hand turn. The only other 18th dynasty tomb that featured a right-hand turn was built for Thutmus I and later reused by his daughter, the female pharaoh Hatshepsut. Unfortunately, much of Nefertiti has been erased and it is difficult to say where she was buried. However, further research will undoubtedly reveal more information about this mysterious and influential woman. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video informative and enjoyable. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell.